Well, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder. It's been a while. <laughs> the uh, channel has not had much new content in recent weeks, and uh, I'll start by apologizing for that. It's 100% my fault. Um, circumstances were such that making videos was difficult, and I got out of the routine of doing it, and when you get out of a routine like that, it's difficult to get it back especially when things are just busy you know i had um finishing up i finished up a semester you know exams projects all that fun stuff and then to kind of top it off just general stress and things like that but you know it's winter break i'm off for till mid january so hopefully we can kind of get back in that ha the habit of bringing videos if not every day, most days. I think that's probably the goal. Uh, a video every day would be bold. Uh, there's a lot of travel in my future and kind of enjoying uh, some of the last breaks I'm going to have before uh, join the working world and do that for, what, 30, 40 years? <laughs> but anyways, the I guess the biggest news since the last time I posted a video is 1.55. Now 1.55 is at its heart simply a content update. I mean, really, all we got we got a couple uh, new desert-themed maps, uh, Tunisia and El Alamein, which is pretty sweet. I've driven on both, and I like both maps so far. Um, I got a chance to explore both of them fairly well. They were very boring games though, so I'm not going to post them. But hopefully I'll get some interesting games on those maps soon. And I'll be able to kind of talk about those maps in detail. On the subject of other things, we got British Tank Tech Tree, which all in all looks pretty solid. Uh, obviously I haven't played much. The Cromwell, the Valentine Mark 11 kind of the highest I've gone in the tech tr gotten in the tech tree so far. And I I like both tanks. I think the Cromwell is definitely the better of the two solely because it's quick. And this is a stock Cromwell, uh by the way. I don't have any upgrades. This is the first game I played in it. But the Cromwell seems like it's probably the better of the two. And the reason is that it has similar I think it's even slightly better frontal armor with granted weak side armor where the Valentine has, you know, pretty strong armor all the way around, but the sixty millimeters doesn't really matter. You know, it's it's it can get you out of scrapes sometimes, but the Valentine's really slow. The armament is similar, if not the same. So, because I don't remember which exactly guns they have, but the uh I know the Valentine has a seventy five and I think this one has the Cromwell Mark V has a 75 as well. So, you know, same gun, and it gets the job done. Gets the job done plenty well enough. The The big interesting thing I, I found is that when you when you go down to the tech tree, you know, obviously I went straight to the bottom, see what's there. You have a Chieftain Mark X, a Conqueror, and a, a Tortoise. Now, the Tortoise is not going to succeed in high rank. I'm glad it's relatively low ranked I think it's only rank four and the battle ratings relatively low for kind of an end of the road tank destroyer because I I mean obviously I haven't played it I haven't fought it but I don't think the armor is going to be up to snuff and uh, the gun I'm not sure is going to be able it should bring some punch it should bring some power but we'll see um, the interesting thing I found is the Chieftain Mark X, or not the Chieftain, the Centurion. Did I say Chieftain before? I meant Centurion. Centurion Mark X seems to be more of a heavy tank than the Conqueror. And uh, that's... The, the, diff, the only difference really is that, I mean, the Centurion has the same amount of turret armor, frontal turret armor. It has less side turret armor. Okay, that's fair. Its hull armor, its frontal hull armor is thicker by a margin over the Conqueror, which is weird. It's not often a heavy tank has inferior armor to a quote-unquote medium tank, but I guess Centurion 
Mark 10 is probably more of a main battle tank. I don't know its exact classification, but I imagine that's more so what it is. You know, the guns, 120 millimeter versus 105, so yeah, Conqueror has, you know, a larger gun, but I would prefer, honestly, I would prefer the 105. Obviously, I haven't shot either gun, but 105 seems to be a pretty solid world to be in, just because the rate of fire is good, and uh, that's really more of what matters. The, the drop dead stopping power is great, but you have to hit them, and it's easier to get shells on target if you can fire a few of them. Uh, another interesting thing I noted was uh, there's no heat ammo anywhere for the British, at least not that I saw, which, you know, could be historically accurate. I don't know. I don't know much about British tanks. I just know, you know, your Churchills, your Cromwells, your Comets, your, you know, those types of things. But I find it interesting that uh, they don't have, like, heat FS and things like that. And obviously I haven't fired the Sabo rounds. Uh, I imagine the Sabo round is enough to get the job done uh, regardless of what target it is but that's something to keep in mind uh, something to watch as we move forward um, maybe magical documents will be procured to demonstrate that the Centurion Mark 10 fired I don't know heat FS or whatever whatever they want to add but I, I, f I feel like that could be a sticking point I don't think it will be the um, Conqueror gets the same gets a Sabo shell, and the Conqueror has more penetration, but that makes sense because it's you know a bigger gun. So it's all it's interesting. the The whole tech tree interests me, and there wasn't a tank I was like, man, I want to skip that one. I think there's definitely stronger ones in the bunch, like the Churchill Mark III. It's a 3.7 battle rating, and has more armor than a KV-1. So I think if you angle it properly, uh, you're really gonna have a pretty solid time just because you know the kv1 is, is a tough nut is a tough nut to crack and it has less armor and it relies on angling so you know having a tank that has more armor and is honestly better at angling because the uh the giant track skirts but it also has a flat turret which will have to be dealt with but I, I think there's there's some real cause to be excited about some of these tanks. The Churchill Mark III is one. The uh, I'm I'm excited for I think it's the Comet or else it's the the next. I think there's two Cromwells and I think the second Cromwell I'm stoked for. And then some of the tank destroyers I think could be really really interesting. In addition to you know your your church jail three and stuff like that. I think there's some really interesting tanks and, uh, hopefully I'll be able to grind my way through and bring reviews. And, you know, I can't guarantee any at the moment, but I'm, you know, I'm going to work on it. I'm going to do my best. Uh, obviously I'm going to skip the, I'm going to skip the reserve tanks. Uh, I mean, maybe that's not obvious, but I'm going to, because, um, I don't really, uh, there's no point uh, kind of reviewing the very low tier tanks because everything kills everything and it's really more of who just fires first and hits first. Uh, there's not... There are you, there are advantages you can gain but it's more tactics rather than equipment, I guess. So I think the reviews will start probably around probably the Comet, maybe the Cruiser 3, probably... No, not the Comet, I'm sorry. The Cromwell, uh, the Cruiser 3 maybe... Or Crusader 3, rather, sorry. Whichever one it is, you know the one I'm talking about. You know you know what I'm talking about, that one. The Valentines, and probably work our way down. There's a couple I might skip, just because they're similar to other tanks. Um, that was interesting right there, because the... I sh presented my side, and, and I didn't angle back for a reason one because Cromwell doesn't seem to turn that quickly in low gears but also with when you're faced with a 122 millimeter gun a lot of times the best one of the better moves you can make is to expose your tracks if you have minimal if you have decent side armor like a minimal amount showing your tracks is not a bad idea because the tracks might just eat the shell um, which seems to be what happened there since he blew off my tracks but if, I think if I was facing him to the front, he would have smacked it into the front of my uh, front of my turret, and it would have gone and blown me up pretty quick. 
but that didn't happen on account of me being sideways. And the only gun I had to worry about in that little scenario is the um, M10 or, yeah, the M10's gun, which uh, could cause me serious problems in that scenario. But he was killed quickly, so I didn't have to deal with him. So, yeah. So I guess the real point of this video is to say, no, I'm not dead. I'm quite alive, alive and well. Uh, videos are coming. I've been receiving lots of messages, and and I encourage. I don't, and I don't want to dissuade people from sending me messages via, uh, you know, however they get to me. There's all kinds of ways people send me messages, but there. Don't worry, the videos are they're coming. You know, I've just been a very busy person for a while, and uh, I got out of the habit. But getting back in the habit, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. So anyway. I want to thank you guys for watching. I've been Corny Swiss, and I'll see you next time. Hopefully sooner than last time. <laughs> it should be. But anyways, take care.